Christmas week and I've got a lot to celebrate this year. Tracy, our daughters, and the entire Growing Deer team are all healthy. My dad is responding very well to the chemotherapy and I've had a great year in the deer woods. But most importantly, I'm thankful that years ago, Jesus Christ came to the earth to forgive all of us of our sins. Without that tremendous gift, none of us would have much to be thankful for. This year, I hope you find the time to be quiet and be thankful for the real reason we celebrate Christmas. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops, also by Reconix, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Dead Downwind, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Whitetail Properties, Blood Sport Arrows, Outdoor Edge Knife, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Caldwell, Hooks Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non-Typical Clothing, House Lubricator Products, LEM Game Processing, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, Redneck Hunting Blinds. Across much of the Whitetails range, recent temperatures have been warmer than normal. This doesn't mean deer will not be feeding, it just simply means they may alter their food of choice for this time of the year. One positive that we can take away from these mild temperatures is its great growing conditions for clover. We like to plant about 10% of our food plots in clover. This way we can provide plenty of forage in the early spring before the soybeans have been planted, plus throughout the fall when it's warm. When the conditions are favorable for clover, it grows rapidly so it doesn't take many acres to feed the deer herd. But when conditions are unfavorable, deer will most likely seek other food sources. So when temperatures are cold, deer will move to the grain where it's available. These food sources provide the needed energy to stay warm during those cold days of the winter. This is an important lesson to remember. When weather conditions aren't following their normal trends, we usually have to adjust our hunting strategy, just like the deer have adjusted to a different food source. Knowing our clover was still growing and very green, Grant and I played a hunch and set out for our summits overlooking Clover Mountain. It's the afternoon of December 5th, and it's pretty warm today, about 58 degrees. Got a face mask on because we're hunting close to where I think the deer are gonna come to the top of the mountain. We're in a stand, we call it Clover Mountain, right on the mountain top, and it's planted with clover. I expect if we see deer, it'll be close to dark because it's so warm. Remember, we adjust our comfort level by adjusting the thermostat or the clothes we wear. Deer adjust their comfort level by where they bed or where they're active and what they eat. It's too warm for deer to be seeking soybean pods full of energy and building up heat. So I anticipate they're gonna be feeding on clover, but close to dark. That afternoon, temperatures were nearly 60 degrees. Great conditions for clover, so we had high expectations for that evening's hunt. It didn't take long for the deer to start moving. Grant and I could spot the silhouettes of some deer feeding on top of the ridge. We just hoped they'd get here before dark. As the sun continued to set, the deer slowly but surely closed the distance. As the lead doe fed across the plot, she finally worked in the range. I'd say bingo. I 
I think she's down. Did you hear her go down? 26 yards. That was a marathon. She ended up about 26 yards. I got the range finder on her right for the shot. It looked good to me, maybe a touch high. It certainly wasn't far back, and it sounded good, sounded solid. So we get down here, and as soon as this deer gets out of the field, check out the arrow, look at the blood on the arrow. But I'm pretty sure I heard her go down, and the shot looked good. So those two probably mean some venison for the freezer. OK, just got to the arrow, and there's good blood all the way through. See, it's just painted with blood all through here. Got blood, 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 blood up here. Good blood up here. Whoa, about went down. Good blood, oh yeah. It's amazing how your confidence can shoot up and shoot down so quick. There she is. I got her. In the road, man. It doesn't do any better than in the road. Thank you, look at that. Just a little high on the entry while a massive doe my goodness. Post recovery, I always like to reflect on why a hunt was successful. Today when we left the truck it was 58 degrees. I didn't think deer would be on soybean grain because soybean grain of course has soybean oil, high energy, and that's what deer really like to eat when it's cold. You see the shows when deer out in the blowing snow and head down in the soybeans. But on a warm day like today, probably going for protein, we elected to hunt a plot called Clover Mountain. It's planted with clover and sure enough just before dark, we saw five or six deer pile out in it. This large doe presented a 26 yard shot and it ended up with about 80 yard blood trail. Another ingredient to the success of this hunt was the wind was strong out of southeast, about eight to nine miles an hour. We were able to approach the stand from the northwest. We thought the deer would be bedded on the far side or the east side of the hill in the shade because of the warm temperature. I don't know if that's true, but Matt picked up these deer a little earlier skylined them through the timber on another food plot on top of the ridge and it took I don't know 30 minutes or longer for the deer to work down our plot and then quite a while for them to work within range. Being patient and setting motionless remember the best camo is a can of set still. Don't move and deer won't pick you up. Putting the ingredients of management having about 10 percent of our plots in clover and hunting knowing when to hunt where resulted in a successful hunt. More back, more back. Having clover plots can increase the huntability of your property if you're experiencing warm temperatures like we've been having here in the Midwest. Well, we just skinned out Grant's deer they shot this evening. The shot placement was a little high, but the two inch cutting diameter of the Havoc did its job and the doe only ran 80 yards. Just as we suspected, the double lung shot, it was a little high, high in the lows, but Havoc, the two inch cutting diameter did a great job, passed through both of them with ease. Shotgun season opened up December 5th in Iowa, and Ryan and Rory were up early and in the field before daylight. The south-southeast wind was perfect for the Iowa shotgun opener. Right as dawn was breaking, a coyote popped up out of the creek bed. Although it's opening morning, this coyote doesn't get a pass. With fur prices super low this year, it's up to land managers and hunters to keep the population in check. Although hunting coyotes is fun, an organized trapping program is the best way to keep the population under control. As the morning went on, Ryan and Rory heard gunshots in the neighboring property as deer started to move through their area. After looking over the landscape, they spotted a buck bedded about 150 yards away. Although it's tough to see, he's broadside to Rory and he's got a clear shot to his vitals. After a quick discussion with Ryan, Rory decides to take the shot. Got him. Get, get on him again. You on him? Yeah. You nailed him. That 
That was double long right there. He went down. He's down. Yes. <laughs> Rory's second shot found its mark and the buck was down. Oh man, look at how cool he is. There's our coyote, uh, fawn killing machine right here. So happy to take these things out whenever we get a chance. It's awesome, man. Big, heavy eight-pointer with all sorts of junk on the bottom and stuff. <sighs> nice gray face. Oh, man. Thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. What a day. Congratulations, fellas, on managing the predator population and harvesting a fine buck. Later that afternoon, Rory even managed to get out and harvest a nice doe, helping balance that buck-to-doe ratio. She's down. I'm tagged. With Grant's recent doe harvest and the sound of Christmas bells, it's time for one of our seasonal favorites, summer sausage. This process is very similar to how we've been making the jerky and the snack sticks, so we fire up the big bite grinder and get our hands messy. Grant shot a doe this past weekend, so today we're going to make some summer sausage. We're going to run it through the grinder, mix it up with the seasoning mix, and stuff it in the fibrous casings. The instructions are well outlined on the LEM package. We're going to be adding 20% pork and running it through the grinder to mix them together. We're looking forward to making the summer sausage because it's Christmas and it's great for entertaining and for giving us Christmas gifts. We're doing 15 pounds of meat today, so we're using three packages of the LEM seasoning along with 15 ounces of water. Instead of using the jerky cannon this time, we attached the stuffing tube to the grinder and started filling up the casing. To get the casings ready for stuffing, we've soaked them for 20 to 30 minutes in warm water. This is to get them more flexible so that they're easier to stuff. Is there a secret to this, like less air bubbles or packing it tight or anything like that? It's easy. As you go, mm -hmm. you're going to go really tight and you kind of work it. You're going to be putting constant pressure, pushing air out okay. as you go. We refrigerated the summer sausage overnight in the refrigerator. Now it's time to put it in the oven. We'll cook it at 180 degrees until it reaches an internal temperature of 165. You'll notice that I use two different shelves because of the amount of product we have. Throughout the time that it's cooking, probably about 45 minutes into it, I'll come and I'll rotate the sausages. Another successful recipe, so we'll certainly be sharing this venison summer sausage with family and friends throughout the Christmas season. Everyone here at Growing Deer hopes you have a safe and wonderful Christmas holiday with family and friends. But please remember to take time and thank Christ, for he is the reason for the season. Thanks for watching Growing Deer. Okay. Are you sure? Let me do it. Dad gum it, Matt! Conditions aren't following the normal trends. We're gonna have to he before the soybeans and plant. I'm gonna get it. And it only takes a small amount of acreage to blow. Ah! All right, moving on. This is an important lesson to remember. <laughs> you were distracting me. <laughs> when you were.